Welcome back to Women's Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, oh. take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun <laughs> things, the stranger things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus and everyone at home hey. watching us live. Hi. It's been Hello, a busy ben. one, man. A lot of stuff has happened. <laughs> Hello, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a great time on Destination Linux on Sunday with Ryan and Michael, and I filled in as a guest host for Noah Chilia, and that we just had a great time. And I showed off one of my uh, unique retro computers in my collection, and the VOD will be out soon, so make sure to watch that. And I also showed off another new little computer I got in eBay, which I'm going to show off here probably next week. <laughs> So, Joe, what have right. you been up to? I didn't get to finish the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Pedro? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, work has uh, been busy, and I know for a fact that the next couple of weeks are going to be even busier because one of the other two people who also does like the laptop stuff. And sending out laptops for not just the east of England, which is our region, but the whole of the Midlands and London is going to be off for a while. So, I yeah, uh, uh, I think I'm going to book a week off after he comes back. <laughs> just a few little laptops, man. It's not that big a deal. Uh, yeah, no. If it was like 15 laptops a week, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we send out 21 laptops a day <laughs> so no no <laughs> oh. it's it's a little too much <laughs> oh man so saturday night uh we finally tested back here this little guy this is a little fiber switch uh cloud smart switch set that up and I give the final test because uh, we're running NDI and I was able to bring in our uh, third box over NDI, which effectively we were, uh, little guy was pushing about a terabyte an hour. Like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. But um, it passed. I was happy with it. Um, so I finished up a little mini review and set up procedures for it. You know, these are the right SOP modules. This is the right fiber, OM4 to get, and all that fun stuff. That's currently posted in Discord. If you want to take a look at it early, it's in the announcements section. And that'll probably be out. I got to finish up some last little bits, probably Friday, no later than next Monday or this upcoming Monday. And Pedro and I, if they do anything at NVIDIA, we were talking about it Saturday. I'm like, oh, it's going to be on the 31st. We got some time. We don't know what they're going to do. But if they have like some pseudo live event, you know, it, we've already been in Jensen's kitchen. We were saying maybe, maybe we can go to like Jensen's shower and pull back the curtain <laughs> that he's got his leather jacket on, like scrubbing down with the 3090 and we get some deets on that. We can play around with it and uh, kind of do a live stream. But if they don't, we won't. It'll be brilliant. I mean, that new cooler that the 3090 supposedly is going to have does look a little bit like a loofah. So. No, oh, no. He could blow, be blow, blow dry his hair. Like, hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> it would be interesting. So you might wonder why Jill's blinking. <laughs> yeah, Jill's yes. got two keyboards just connected down there for some reason. <laughs> some I reason, wonder man. why. I don't know, man. It may or why may not have is? something to do with um, <laughs> me having one of those uh, keyboards as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. So, so like I bought these, the cheapo. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Of course, on AliExpress, they're about half the price. So, uh, pro tip. It might take a couple of weeks to get to you, but yeah, they're much cheaper. Uh, it's an AJAZ AK33. And. It's like, okay, so it has fully addressable RGB, like per key. So let's have a look on the interwebs to see if someone made a Linux utility that would let you customize that. Lo and behold, uh, thanks for open source actually did. And minute, it's available on GitHub. By customize, you mean cut it off, right? Uh, it has a couple of semi-off modes. <laughs> semi-off modes? No. Yes. Yeah, you can, you can turn <laughs> off the there, effects. <laughs> yeah, there's a mode that all the keys go off, and you just think, oh, okay, so no RGB, and then you hit a key and it ripples out in full RGB. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, they're they're beautiful keyboards. Um, I have uh, three three different Ajaz AK33 keyboards, including the ice blue one and the RGB one I've got here lit up. And I bought them actually back in 2017 and even got Matthew of Lutris one as a gift. And nice. um, what I well, I was really happy that <laughs> Pedro uh, found this software because I didn't even know it existed. And uh, that's that's really cool. And but one of the reasons I bought these keyboards is that um, you don't have to use software to configure them. You can actually configure each individual yes. key on board. <laughs> And that was why they're, you know, beautiful for Linux. But now we have software, so I'm looking forward to playing around with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's much easier to just set the uh, the Python bindings to set the key <laughs> colors rather than use the control alt butterfly fn combinations that you need to do. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, apparently it works. Uh, there's a bit of a caveat uh, that uh, if you have one of the older models with the older revision of the firmware, this uh, utility may very well not work so you'll have to check it out and see for yourself but the newer ones which i'm assuming mine is because yeah i bought it a month yeah ago. yeah i bought it a month ago it's i have had it for a few days so yeah <laughs> <laughs> mine are older so i'm not expecting too much love <laughs> so here's my my ice blue yeah. one <laughs> The only one I saw that was um, remotely interesting, they, they have one that is, looks like a little miniature 104 that's just that beige color, but it also has like a surprise barf rainbow <laughs> flavor. Yes. <laughs> of course it does. No, of course it does. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, no, these, uh, these I think both keyboards. of you are just damaged. Um, <laughs> I like unicorn barf. <laughs> I like the clickies. Yes, I like for for being inexpensive keyboards. The they they're really comfortable to type on. They just have a nice tactile feel to them. Hmm. And I have a lot of mechanical keyboards in my collections. My collection. Yeah, these they are use some Zorro of my switches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> well, the software's there. All this is going to be in our show notes. If you want to check it out, and that is most definitely a thing. But we got a birthday to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, this is so exciting. So my favorite Linux OS, Debian, is 27 years old. Yay, Debian. And, you know, they're the best way uh, to keep them going and active is to contribute. And this this is not only by code, but you can also suggest wallpapers for upcoming artwork for the distro. And you can help write documentation. And, you know, you could also participate in the upcoming DebConf, which actually starts tomorrow, I believe, the August, the 23rd to the 29th. No, it's not tomorrow. Uh, up next it's week. Sunday. <laughs> next uh, Sunday. It starts Sunday. <laughs> Had my Sunday. days in, uh, incorrect. <laughs> but the best way to contribute to them is to just to put Debian on a live USB and give it to someone and, you know, spread the love. And as you know, Debian, you know, is the base for so many OSs, including Ubuntu. And it's very important. <laughs> don't remind Canonical of that. They don't like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's also, yeah, that's that's true too. And it's, but it's also the Swiss Army knife of OSs. It works on almost every platform and every arc, computer architecture. So it's very important. And I feel old now that it's turned 27 because I've been using it for 27 years. <laughs> what we're seeing right here in the studio, I'm surrounded by five machines that make this broadcast possible. We got three host box, we got a thread ripper, we got Jackbox, all running Debian 10. Now, Debian gets a bad rap, kids, does just a little bit, just slightly. It's old, it's outdated, but do you know what? It's the boring, the good boring. Why? Because it's the stable boring. That's the good type of boring. Now, it's not incredibly out of date compared to a lot of stuff. You know, I'm running a modern kernel. 1804 is more out of date. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and it does everything I need, including, you know, I do all my gaming here. And it's not difficult to get set up and running. It isn't. It's a bit roundabout, but um, compared to something like Scent, Cakewalk. 
It's got next. It's got a GUI installer, man. How much easier can you get? And I'm glad that it is still keep it on, keep it on. I'm looking forward to Debian 11 and all the fun, exciting things that are gonna come with that. <laughs> Not really. And connecting to a uh, WPA protected Wi-Fi network with the current Debian installer actually works. Unlike my uh, first few attempts at installing Debian, where it's like, okay, I'm trying to do this over Wi-Fi and it's not letting me. Huh. Oh, yeah, WPA Debian. is broken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Debian 10 was a, was a great release. It really is. I think it's fantastic. And it's always something to, you know, like, you know, once you get some education under your belt, it's something to us. Like, all right, maybe I want to move over to this. And it's user-friendly-ish. I don't think I would just give it to somebody on a thumb drive and say, here, have out. I'd give them something a little simpler like Arch. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> it doesn't have a GUI. <laughs> oh, well, Debian has a GUI installer now, so that's not an issue anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, lot. Um, all types of retro stuff this week, huh? So, yeah. Lib Retro, something happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lib Retro got very much spearfished. Uh, a uh, malicious actor got a hold of enough information about one of their most esteemed contributors and basically got them to give him access and then he pushed out an empty commit to all of the gits and everywhere else so everything was wiped and uh one of the things that they complain about is that they didn't have uh the currently with how much money they're making and how much money they're spending on hosting and everything else they didn't have an automated backup it's like why didn't you set one up yourselves it would have been better, but whatever. Uh, so uh, basically all of the Windows, uh, Linux, and something else builds will be okay. And they said that they were already planning to have a bit of a server migration going. So this has been kind of like the kick in the teeth to get them started on that. And um, yeah, the Linux, Windows, and Android. Those are the three that are uh, currently available. Uh, you can download those. None of the builds uh, or the source code, as far as they can tell, uh, have been compromised. It was just someone out to do some damage without trying to target the community. It was very specifically targeted at them, or so they believe. And yeah, I'm inclined to agree with them. But the moment that someone or a group of someone's targets you like this with this much information mm -hmm. that's a real crappy situation to be in it is that's one of the terrible things about um i make it a point never to say come at me because you can be got no matter how many yeah. boxes you're hiding behind um it is unfortunate but i i will speak from personal experiences losing everything or having something compromised is a very painful but good first step in having some type of disaster recovery set up. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a hard way to learn <laughs> it, but at least the system will be in place right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. They learn from this one. <laughs> yeah. Make three backups of everything. <laughs> and, you know, Lib Retro could use your support on Patreon and so they can have the money to make their backups and do data migration. So. They really need some help in that area with finances. Go check it out. So <laughs> cool. we talked about five. Oh, and uh, thanks to Artharin for submitting that bit of story. <laughs> awesome, Artharin. We love you. <laughs> Mozilla had some layoffs. Yeah, this was really week. depressing. Yeah. So after Mozilla laid off 250 people or a quarter of its works force last week, um, we have some good news, which is really nice. Uh, Google is actually expected to extend their search deal with Mozilla for another three years in November when um, they are scheduled to reveal their 2019 financials. This is really a great thing. This is uh, going to happen for an estimated cost of 400 to $450 million. And this should help uh, keep Mozilla and Firefox afloat, at least for a while. And uh, 
you know, Google has been their main source of one of their main sources of income for a lot of years because it's been the de default search engine for Firefox. So this yeah. will maintain it in that space. <laughs> So we won't get like uh, I guess a, a Yahoo or DuckDuckGo <laughs> default on Firefox. I wouldn't mind DuckDuckGo to be honest, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, from Mozilla's position, it's very hard to refuse that kind of money, <laughs> especially when your finances aren't doing terribly well. Yeah, I think that's kind of one of the important <laughs> things. Um, we always, you know, we didn't address layoffs last week, but this is the good news, and so let's focus on that. And then, you know, that deal has been renewed and it basically boils down to Google has been the, you know, the Mozilla Corporation's lifeline for quite some time. It's their main source of revenue. And that's the thing, man. Um, big fan of Firefox, mm, slightly lesser fan of the Mozilla Corporation. But for me, that kind of boils down to spending every time I think about because, you know, they have offices in London, Paris, Toronto, Mountain View, San Francisco and Portland. That's not all. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, those Mountain View and San Francisco offices alone would uh, save them a lot of money. Paris and yeah. London. <laughs> <laughs> London as well, yes. Yes. I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's like spending, but, you know, that's kind of the good news. Like, okay, we're, we're going to refocus on trying to get back to hopefully like their core stuff because they've had a lot of side projects like Firefox mm -hmm. OS. Mm -hmm. Part of me is like, well, it, we we need an alternative to Android, but I don't know if it's like viable to actually see that happen. I, I don't know, man. And honestly, and what, their VPN isn't terrible. It isn't terrible. Like I see best, Moz yeah, VPN now. Good. See, this is where you got to navigate it because yes, they need additional revenue streams, right? You know, because you don't want to be sitting there at like, please Google renew that contract and. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, no one wants to be in that position. And but like the VPN stuff, I think VPN's kind of baked at this point. It's a bit of a commodity. There's so many companies out there doing it. Maybe they can make it work. Maybe they can bring some like super secret new sauce to it. I'd be happy to see that. Um I don't know, man. What do we think about like what if Firefox was split off the same way Thunderbird was? Yeah, I think that that would be a good way to go. I don't know if they could do yeah. that. How about actually split it off in more of a way than uh, Thunderbird was? <laughs> because Thunderbird is still very much under the wing of Mozilla. They are so, financially outside of the corporation, the way yes. it's structured. They just rely on the Mozilla Corporation for legal counsel, effectively, at this point. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, at that point, I I think that would be better, mostly because uh, Mozilla has a company have had some questionable decisions in the past, like that ARG that was totally not spam, you guys, that um, they're hoping people forget. I haven't. <laughs> I don't know, man. I It's very important. The fight for the web's real. You know, yeah. to maintain open standards, then you have Google's going to Google's going to Google. I mean, they're mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? Be, do no, we took that off years ago. What are you talking about? We're the new Google um, Alphabet, and Firefox needs to be out there, and the market share has been declining. I, I personally, I think, just as a fan of Firefox, I would say, are you listening to a Yahoo on the internet? Focus on that core product. You know, stick with the one that brought you to the dance and. The Don't. one that puts your name in people's mouths. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, you know, I, I've been noticing there's not as much advertising for Firefox. And um, yeah, focusing on that and getting the word out that, you know, we're the open source alternative to Google. And, you know, also when I was thinking about this is that, you know, Google needs this competitor in, in the web browsing space. Because they need the, they need to, um, you know, push progress, and uh, this this helps Google become better too with uh, Chrome and Chromium. Well, if you don't want to address it, um, I'm pretty sure Google is keeping making sure the Mozilla and Firefox is going to stay around, <laughs> so the like 
monopoly and antitrust laser beams from the yes. government start hitting them. They're like, no, see, look, there's this other browser. See, <laughs> no one's using yeah. it, but that's their problem. Yeah. <laughs> Google, which is a little scrappy company, man. Like, yes. six and three um, Just like Netscape years ago. Yes. <laughs> well, it's the same reason like Intel would never yeah. let AMD go out of business mm -hmm. because they don't want to get hit with that. So yeah, that's the thing. But let's talk about Katie and Live 2004. It is out. It's got a gang of new features. It's got new things that you might want to play with. And I did. Uh, here's the big note. I definitely want to be very aware of this to anyone listening. Projects created with this are not backwards compatible. So back that up before you bring it in, man. Um, there are definitely a couple of new interface layouts. There's support for multiple audio streams. This is great because the video that we're recording right now has five audio streams attached to it. Very happy to see that. Better zoom for keyframes in the clip monitor. It managed to pick up the uh, new segment with what we're doing at LGC Weekly. I dropped that in the timeline. It's like, you don't have enough audio chattels. Would you like me to add them? Yes, Katie, and live do that. And it did. <laughs> now, it took a minute to figure that out, but it got there in the end. I was just using the app image. I still want the ability to, to like drag and select in the timeline. I just can't live without that anymore you know just being able to highlight and move stuff around i'm spoiled but uh to give you some idea i'm recording with uh dnx hd so it's like, let's do a little test let's take the new segment and it's recorded dnx hd 209 so it's 1080p and uh i dropped that katie and live and i said all right render this out h264 it took uh let's see a little a little over 10 minutes to do H.264 stereo pair out. And that's on a Threadripper 1920X. And comparison, I dropped the same clip in DaVinci. H.265 32-bit audio took about five. Hmm. Oh, that, that's like the yeah. unfortunate thing about it. And you got to bring up the positive stuff, the good work they're doing, but you also got to like do the reality check because yeah. work on the GPU acceleration for Melty they say might start with QT6, to which I have to say some version of that statement has been repeated for at least the last five years. It's been when thing X, then we're... I gotta say, man, I mean, we're halfway through 2020, and hopefully we'll finish out the year without, like, a pole flip or something like that, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much longer. I, I, broken record. I know you've heard me say this before. I, can you kick that can, you know, for GPU accelerated timeline, export compute, export, not NV encode, but genuine compute. Um, you know, I don't, if OpenCL or CUDA, that's no longer a feature anymore. That's just like a basic thing I expect in a nonlinear video editor. Because yeah. just <laughs> the massive advantage is something I would love to have in KDN Live. Um, I do still use KDN Live. I use it to make the credits, but for these shows... I have to use DaVinci because you're talking two plus hours of just time save, simply just down to rendering, much less the timeline being able to move stuff around. What are your thoughts, Joe? And yes, Kensico, yeah. uh, thanks for the heads up there. The link in the show notes is wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, we were talking about 2008, oh, we... but yeah. we were looking at yeah, the uh, article for 2004. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Too> <laughs> that, that's why I put it in the notes. Uh, we had talked about it on LWW220 back in, in April 2004. Mm -hmm. But this 2008 release had you know several new features um, that, were, that was uh, baked in and changed. And I like the new preview scaling feature that allows you to lower the resolution so that you can watch the timeline preview of effects and edits much quicker. And this is something that all the other, uh, you know, major industry standard video editors have like Premiere and DaVinci. Yeah. So that you can scrub, you know, you can scrub on the timeline through your video and see the effects in real time. And sometimes in order to do that, you have to bring the resolution down. So that's that's definitely a very important feature. <laughs> I mean, the, the yeah, the bringing down of the resolution is kind of a thing that you need because you don't always have access to your big honking machine at home or in the office. Exactly. And you're doing it on a laptop. So yeah, bring that down to 360p and do the scrubbing. <laughs> yes. Or, or there, there's another life hack for fixing all that. Don't edit compressed formats. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, that'll put I do a everything. heck of a lot less yes. load on the, on the uh, CPU. Yes, <laughs> right. yes, I do everything uncompressed, but for the average consumer, it requires a lot more storage space. <laughs> but yes. it is the highest quality, and you you have higher. You know, if you bring in uncompressed, you have better. It, better quality when you compress it later. Well, I'm sure sometimes. It. Well, you don't want to do any transcoding. <laughs> I mean, if at all possible, you want to record an uncompressed format. That's definitely what you want to do, especially if you're dealing with like 10 bit or something like that. If you can be dealing with ProRes or DNxHR, Correct. if you can be dealing with 4K UHD, something along those lines. But um, I don't know if KDN Live has an option to generate optimized media. That's interesting mm. if they do. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah, I've been using it a long time. That's not something I've. Mm, that's a basic feature in DaVinci. If you bring anything well, in and you want yeah. to generate your optimized media so you can go through your timeline and not have to worry about it. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorite things about DaVinci, actually. <laughs> Why does this exist, Pedro? This exists, uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't entirely sure because <laughs> it's a podcatcher uh, that doesn't play podcasts. It's called Shellcaster, and uh, it's got a... Uh, it plays an shells, man. It says it right there in the no. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's got an Encursus style um, GUI on it that you can access from literally every everywhere. If you just SSH into, say, a media server, you can set this up to catch all of your favorite podcasts or whatever other um, media RSS streams you happen to have and download and set everything up from there. But you can't actually play it without an external player. And uh, big kudos to Arthur and for leaving us a uh, comment in the show notes, which is something you can do if you're one of our Patreons. Uh, it's like, since it's headless, I can see the potential use with HTPC. It's like, yes, you have something that's catching all the podcasts and then you just fire up a thin client HTPC and you point the media player at wherever the, um, the podcasts are being hosted. Oh, okay. No, that, that makes sense. You just have everything in a headless box in a server in an ass somewhere and then you point your HTPC to play the podcasts yeah had it that okay <laughs> yeah I was really happy that it imports OPML um, file import from other podcast clients this is something you think would be standard among all the podcasting apps but it isn't so it's nice to see uh, one that's a uh, uh, CLI based that does that and you know it looks a lot nicer and it and is much more sophisticated looking and easier to use than the classic uh, CLI client Bash Potter that I used years ago. <laughs> that that was just basically a script that you ran, and um, yeah. but it, it worked. <laughs> it worked really really well. So, but yeah, this is a much nicer app. <laughs> so, what's a podcast? Us. You know, now that you bring it up, I never actually thought about that. Uh, RSS feed um, <laughs> with audio. <laughs> Asking the hard-hitting questions, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a podcast is a show that can be produced via audio um, with an RSS feed. And it will, uh, you can, every week, like the show is... LWW's I think it week. got the name because of the iPods. Yeah, it did. It did. But the generic yeah. terms for it is, you know, <laughs> an RSS that with audio. <laughs> you could be netcast like Leo Laporte and Twit. Oh, is he still trying to <laughs> rename that? He actually did finally name rename back to podcast <laughs> instead of netcast. All right. So <laughs> this next little bit, I just wanted to throw it in because uh Buddy of mine was looking for a stablet, and I've never owned a stablet, <laughs> so I went looking around, and I ran across Digimon, which, you know, she didn't want to spend a ton of money, and I was like, let's see what type of knockoff devices we have. And they maintain a list with drivers for stuff I've never heard of. And I'm like, oh, uh, you are you one? Yeah, it's basically all of the alternatives to Wacom that don't cost you both legs. The classic traditional key. <laughs> way. It's the easy pen, yeah. Sure. The easy pen ones. The uh, especially the monitors. They have they make some really nice uh monitors that you can draw on. Okay. Uh 
There was another Very one. expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I'm definitely seeing some monopress love here. This is this is along with my nice. thinking. I'm like, if I need something at least first to play around with, let's go um, frugal, not cheap. Cheap would be something that you sacrifice quality for price. Frugal, let's see if we mm -hmm. can save a few bucks for something that's going to kind of work. Yeah. UG Tizer. <laughs> okay. Yep. UG is also one of those Yugi. brands. <laughs> and Yugi also. That's a Veek. very popular a great, a I don't brand know, among my students. Do we go with Veek? <laughs> is that more Klingon or Romulan? Veek. Uh, Romulan. Romulan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. View Sonic Walt. This is, this is just all there. That's why I just want to throw that in. If you've been thinking about buying a tablet and you want to play around with it. They exist, and Pedro, you were like, ah, it's never been... Oh, they're still updating it, but... No, because I went to the downloads on account of, you know, I live with someone who has a drawing tablet. So it's like, okay, let the uh, plug it in. It's like, oh, the last stable release was in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I hit, I clicked the uh, GitHub uh, icon that they have. It's like, oh, no, okay. So the last commit was actually two months ago. All right, okay. Like, it's still uh, being kept up to date. Cool. It's a stable <laughs> yeah, release, Very nice. Man. That... <laughs> This hasn't been updated in four years. Nothing's changed, but it, <laughs> ah, it's a dead project. But everything works. Uh, that's neat. Maybe as neat as this, this is just something I wanted to throw in at the end with Paragon. They've maintained a commercial NTFS driver for a minute. I mean, it's been a while. And they've decided to share the Linux love. And there's no coincidence that Microsoft is moving off NTFS. No, no, no. Don't, don't look at it that way because they don't come off. I like that as... Microsoft is calling it re-FS. Yeah. Re yeah, yeah. Right? So <laughs> they have offered their full read-write NTFS setup. Good one, so Pedro. <laughs> inclusion in the Linux kernel. All 27,000 lines of it. Or bleh. Here you go. Deal with it. Now, this patch uh, that they submitted doesn't include the uh, Paragon utilities, but read, write, compressed files, internal replay, all that's there. Basically, it's just a fully functional NT NTFS read, write driver. What does, what's going to happen to the existing one? I don't know. Smarter people are still working on that. And it's <laughs> going to take some doing to get it merged <laughs> yeah. because like response, the first response on the mailing list was effectively like, <laughs> Really? You're just gonna dump that? Like, what the yeah. H are we supposed to do with this? <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't fit time. it all in an email because it was twenty-seven thousand lines. Yeah, like, you don't say. <laughs> but they're working on it. it was, it's like maybe we'll create a new branch for it, and it'll be a thing. I mean, you need that. I'm glad that's there. That was uh, man. I still remember back in the days when you could read in TFS, but if you wrote to it, man. If you oh, really yes. wanted to scramble to somebody's data, <laughs> do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, at, at least in my snarky comment, at least the Paragon created NTFS driver <laughs> is probably would be less bloated than the Microsoft one if they finally made one for Linux. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Microsoft is going to be opening the NTFS um, uh -uh. <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> like at all uh but yeah it there's pedro mateus so from such hits is they'll never release that file system Peyton. uh no i said that i didn't trust them until they did <laughs> and then they did but no ntfs seeing that it's still very much in use and there's still a lot of people holding on to windows 7 it's like yeah. you hold on there buddy uh but yeah if they released that right everyone would see all of the holes and i'm sure that there's tons of them because the amount of hit and miss um bs -ery that i have to do at work to get ntfs to play ball sometimes yeah no they're not gonna release that anytime well, soon. this is ntfs they are there and so you gotta kind of get the right idea you can make an um an optional ntfs and you could call it offs <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good, Ben. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that would be a thing. All right. That's just some good news. I know that's going to make somebody's day. And I understand, like, the untrustworthiness. I mean, like, what? what are you, no, oh, now you're doing it? Okay. You know what? <laughs> hey, they're doing it, though. I mean, give them a little bit of credit. Mm -hmm. 
for that. Yeah, but, that's awesome. Um, I think that's gonna we get a little slice of pie. But before we jump into that, we got to thank all the beautiful people who are making this show possible. And that's our patrons, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. It's simple. You like what we do? Kick us a buck a week or kick us more. Come hang out in our Discord. You get a custom show every week. It's the behind the scenes stuff that we kind of hope you don't narc us out on. You know, you get a little RSS and you get the video feeds. Although you can totally do it because no one else cares. <laughs> That's great, man. It's oh, brilliant. No. Obscurity. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Shh, be quiet. Uh, but thanks for making it possible. We have one new person. Uh, we need to thank Joe. Yeah, Senpai. No, no, we got to thank somebody. You don't have to call me Senpai. Not in public. Oh. <laughs> I think Senpai finally <laughs> noticed us. Yes. <laughs> senpai is our, our latest patron. <laughs> thank you so much, Senpai. And it's nice having you in chat as well. <laughs> that is brilliant. Um, no, shameless self-promotion over with. Oh, we have t-shirts, Amazon wish list, all that fun stuff. I just ordered some Start stickers myself. Yeah. Com. Go there. <laughs> Yes. That's the thing. We're horrible at this stuff. Um, <laughs> slice of pie. Mm. Ooh. Apple pie. Does that Definitely. look appetizing? I know both of you monsters eat sweets. Um, uh, yes, it does. they didn't stupidly load them with sugar, uh, then yes, it, that would be amazing. Mm. But so, fortunately, a lot of people put a lot of sugar into pies. Now, yeah. would, would that stop you or slow you down? I'd probably only eat like a slice go, this is way too sweet, no more. If it didn't yeah. have a lot of added sugar, I'd probably eat the whole thing easily. <laughs> well, I mean, even if it was super sweet, already have lots go, of like, sugar. chill out. <laughs> yes. Chill out on the couch well, for a minute and be like, you know what? You know what? I think I can handle this. I can come back for round two. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so this is hipster pie. This is really awesome. This <laughs> this is a, a container for an IoT notification scroller, and Looks the like container that transformer is transformer I bought from AliExpress. <laughs> the container <laughs> is a cassette tape, and it's got a little little LED notification scroller on it, and you can hook it up to if this then that, and have notifications on it, like from Twitter or Discord. That's what I would use it for. But he got all the parts with a Raspberry Pi 0W in this in the cassette form factor. And it's so cute. Yep. And it will even it'll even still fits with all the modifications. It still fits in a, a classic cassette deck. So I was just Yeah, I was actually so surprised cool. <laughs> that you can fit a Raspberry Pi 0 in a cassette yes. vertically. <laughs> it's like horizontally sure, absolutely, but that's vertical. I, I can tell you one place that you're definitely not going to be able to fit that. <laughs> and it has the vibrator. That is really cool for <laughs> notifications. <laughs> I like it. But one place I don't think this would have a good time at is a little place I like to call Customs. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe if you did it on a, uh opaque cassette and put the teeny tiny little LCD you, you on the front. You would be in more trouble after they cracked it open. <laughs> I'm uh, not saying at, yeah, spy. At, the, at the end game. No, Spyware. you wouldn't get any trouble, but the, oh, you're going into a room and they crack a cassette tape. I'm like, something feels, sir. <laughs> you might as well make it make ticking noises man <laughs> you can it's easy enough to wire a teeny tiny little speaker through the gpi opens <laughs> yeah uh, yeah the tsa approval rating on that is like it's single digits low single digits man <laughs> And whatever you say, don't say it's like, no, it's not a bomb, but it's totally a detonator. What? <laughs> Self-destruct in 30 seconds. The, the biggest problem I have with this, uh, it's an interesting project, but I don't have a cassette player, man. Oh, gosh, I have plenty of those. I think I still <laughs> so. have my old one. My Walkman. <laughs> Your Walkman. <laughs> yeah, I still have my original Sony Walkman, and it still works great. I used in high school. Yeah. And the Discman. I had a Philips Discman. <laughs> it wasn't called Discman. It was something else, but it was Philips branded one. Yeah, those were cool. <laughs> nope. Um. 
I don't even have a CD player yeah. in this house, man. Come on. Oh, well, you have a, probably a CD-ROM somewhere in one of your computers or you're in your collection. Collection, Jill? Yeah. <laughs> DVD <laughs> rewriter? <Bigger> is. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, 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 I can make an exception, A, because that thing's nauseatingly blue. B, mm -hmm. is that's clearly the emergency, like, Oh, where's this oh yeah, <laughs> that is okay. There's something on a CD or a DVD, and we need to get it out. All mm -hmm. right. <laughs> oh man, no, I do think uh, I have some pre-mades. These have drives, but that's the first thing I do with them. Unplug the disk drive. I do have. We went on a search. Well, I went on a search. Like, do I have a DVD drive in this house? And I found uh, one of my Sun Ultra fives. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had a DVD. Didn't come with it. That was the thing. It, that was a, oh, yeah, I shoved that in there because I couldn't find a CD drive. And mm -hmm. that was the thing. All right. Uh, maybe you want to tell us about your drives, your digits. Maybe you have something that's more nauseatingly blue than Pedro's drive. How could they do that? <laughs> Good luck. But please do. Uh, if you do have one of them, take a picture and uh, go to contact uh, the, the contact go to page on the that's a long URL, I was URL, going to say contact.linuxgamecast.com. It's like, that probably doesn't redirect right. No. Uh, but yeah, contact page on linuxgamecast.com and fill out the form. Make sure you pick LWDW from the show box. And yeah, send us your pictures of really turbo neon colored external DVD drives or yeah. external floppy disk drives. Why not? Sure, why not? <laughs> we'll make it a thing. All right, uh, we will see you next week. But let's roll some credits before we get out. Maybe. Hi everyone! I gotta find yes. them. Gotta thank our patrons. Here we come. Choo choo. Wrong ones. Uh, <laughs> Slightly off. Well, that's okay because because the LGC Weekly runs ones run a little slower. It's not the LGC Weekly ones. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Thank you to our beautiful executive producers and producers. We love you all. And our latest and one, And everyone Senpai. out there sharing the show, just seriously, we do really badly with self-promotion, so if you like us and... I'm blaming that like on you, Katie and Live, because I, <laughs> I had to update my template, and I finally made it to the DP. The template's so old we were doing the show in 720p. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> Love you, everyone.